I'm Denise Quirk. My master's degree is in marriage and family therapy. So that was my first licensure. And after that, I became an addiction specialist. So I am state certified and I'm also nationally certified as a gambling counselor and supervisor and state certified in Nevada as a gambling counselor and supervisor. And I run the Reno Problem Gambling Center, which is a nonprofit outpatient treatment center for gamblers and their families. And I also have my private practice in the same place, which is Red Hawk Counseling. So I've been doing therapy and specializing in helping families with addictions issues since I graduated from UNR, University of Nevada, Reno, Go Pack, in 1992. And I'm uh, Joe Reisman, and I uh, have a couple of decades of experience in uh, addictions and mental health with a concentrated focus on uh, disordered gambling and uh, have contributed to state education and trainings uh, in both Oregon and Washington uh, over the years. I'm a uh, licensed professional counselor and a um, uh, international certified gambling counselor, too, and a board approved clinical consultant. Well, the overall uh, theme of the uh, presentation will be um, staying in line while online. And it's really centered around um, the um, ethical uh, applications to online counseling and the um, all the little areas that come up around that uh, for clinicians. And that would include uh, not just individual counseling, but also um, people are doing group work. Um, there's things to consider ethically around that. Um, we, uh, you know, as if navigating the world of ethics isn't challenging enough, I think um, uh, now we're making it virtual. And, and there are things that go along with that that we need to consider and, and you know, get a refresher on, which is really what we do year after year with ethics. We refresh it. It's a gray area. It keeps moving and we have to move with it. Moving with a moving target, very much so, especially since post-COVID, while we are exploring ways to appropriately interact with our clients and encourage them to participate with us, while we may have had a few online or um, telehealth opportunities in the past, it has become a majority for me of the sessions that I have. So I really want to share and interact with folks in this training about what their experience has been and what our experience has been really navigating the waters of Zoom and VC and all the other uh, programs and platforms that we use for telehealth. Excellent. I think this is going to be a very, very timely and interesting topic. And uh, I look forward to hearing what your experiences have been so far, the the challenge and the and the success that might have come with using that. Thanks, Tana. And we really want to share and find out what has been working and not working for the people who join us in this training. We're going to give you some basic elements. We're going to make sure you get a refresher course on words because words matter and then we're going to expand on that with our experience and look forward to hearing what your experience has been yeah and we're we're uh, we're looking at, at doing that and combining the um really the foundations of ethics um and and the building blocks of ethics um which are, are the things that we constantly have to apply but on the gambling side um you know, gambling behaviors are, are pretty easy to hide and um, and to cover up and, and lie about and, and really get away with it. And that makes deception very easy to carry out. And when that's uh, in place, then uh, ethics start to be uh, misplaced or disconnected from a person. And so it's not only us, uh, but it's working with clients around these ideas too and really I guess that means um, modeling ethical um, exchanges and communications with people and helping them to reconnect with, with their own 
uh, values and ethics? Core values and irrational core beliefs are definitely topics that we spend a portion of our time every day with our clients from the minute we meet them and we're establishing what brought them in all the way through how we're feeling as we're interacting with them. Uh, transference and countertransference were big issues in my early training days. And I think while we may not still be using the same words all the time, as Joe mentioned, we're going to be talking about what are the things that uh, motivate us and motivate our clients so that we can best assist them through that delicate area that they are going through emotionally without harming them in any way or us being harmed in any way. That's really, to me, what some of the ethical considerations are founded on. Ethics is is everywhere. And right now, certainly we're being um, influenced and affected by a new way uh, ethics are being tested in uh, the world we live in. And uh, it's just a good time to remind ourselves that they're, they're important uh, guideposts that we have to mm -hmm. reconnect with. Ethics is trust, respect, dignity, honesty, you know, core, core things.